Hi, this is Kay from Clever Someday, and today I'm going to show you how to convert photos into machine sketchable files using an iOS app called SketchMe. By machine sketchable, I mean something that you can draw or write with a pen or marker in a digital die cutter like a Cricut or Silhouette, or with an Axie Draw or any kind of Drawbot or pen plotter. So we're going to start in the App Store so I can show you exactly which app to get. I've typed in SketchMe into the search bar. S-K-E-T-C-H-M-E-E -E -E. and you'll see a number of items come up. I'm on an iPad. For the iPhone for this demo you want to download Sketch Me Lite. For the iPad Sketch Me Lite HD. These are free and will allow you to follow along with me. If you like the results with your own photos and want to move forward you'll need to ultimately spend about five dollars to get the full functionality but again the sketch me light app is what I'm recommending you download and what I'm using for this tutorial so the idea behind sketch me is to change a photo to a sketch what's the big deal you may be wondering hundreds of apps do that what is very different about sketch me and what makes it invaluable for machine drawing is that it converts photos into actual vector strokes which we can then translate into draw paths for our die cutters or draw bots. And not only that, but we can adjust the level of detail and the number of pins needed to suit our project. And it works with low resolution images if that's all you have. The other really cool thing about SketchMe is that the algorithm it uses gives an image that looks photo real from a distance, but convincingly hand drawn and artistic close up. Because these are apps, your photos need to be in the camera roll on your device in order to use them. I've already uploaded some example images on mine. To import a new photo, click the photo thumbnail and navigate to the picture you want. I'm going to pick a photo I snapped at the beach recently. When you import, you have a chance to crop to any one from a list of 10 aspect ratios that goes from more square to more narrow as you move down the list. Or if you rotate the screen, you effectively get nine more choices. For instance, if you were going to want a drawing for an eight by 10 frame, you might want to choose the 5 to 4 ratio. You can always crop down again later, but you can't widen the crop area without starting over. So be conservative with this first crop. The crop frame stays put and you use pinch and zoom and drag to pan to situate the photo inside the frame how you want. And then click OK when you're happy with that. The default rendering on colored pencil will take a second, but you'll see it looks really nice. Now if you're just viewing on screen or printing, these settings, or any, are fine. But since we'll be machine drawing, we have to simplify down to something more practical than this image, which would take 32 colors. First we're going to change to pencil mode, which only uses blacks or grays on light paper. Since we plan to draw on plain white paper, we set paper to plain and paper color to none. We need to set the intensity to high and the tip to hard for conversion reasons. I'm going to set the shades to three because this is a good practical number for machine drawing. Three shades means I will need to have pens and three different tip widths, shades of gray, or a combination of those that fit my machine. I'm getting good results with three shades and it keeps things manageable. Setting the overlap to the maximum, which is three in this case, seems to work best. Assuming you want to stick with three pins, you will use these settings every time. Now the only thing left to play with is the detail level. The higher the detail, the closer to the original, but also the larger the file and the longer it will take to draw. So basically you want to use the lowest level of detail that will give you the look you want. I think for this image, I like this one higher. You can also click the redraw button to redraw the image with these same settings. Sometimes it'll look better with the strokes at different angles, so this is something to try. You do not want to click the randomize button because this randomizes all the settings. Fun to play with, but not getting us closer to a usable file. Let's look at some more examples before we learn how to save and convert a file. Here's a family portrait, which will let me show you the effect of cropping. I'll rotate my screen so that I can start with the whole image. You can move this panel around by just touching the bottom bar and dragging it so you get a better view of your screen. You can see when we bring in the whole photo, there's very little detail in the faces. 
So let's crop again to get in closer on the faces and see what happens. That looks much better. If we cropped on in to one person, you would see even more detail emerge. Professional photos against a white background are always going to work best, but as you can see, you can get good results without the ideal photo. If you have a white background, it will not only make your subject easier to see, but will result in fewer strokes. Let's look at this iconic photo of Steve Jobs as an example. You can see we can go from a very detailed photo at the highest setting to an abstract artistic rendering at low detail. And if you stand back from your screen, you'll see what I mean about the effect of it looking photo real from a distance. This is also a good example for me to show you the other black and white modes. Most of the time we're going to want to use pencil, which uses black or gray strokes on a light background. For this image, you can see the black strokes making up the face and hair and the blank background. Chalk mode does the inverse and uses shades of white on a dark background. In this example, you can see that all the background is filled with white strokes while the hair is blank. This particular image wouldn't be a good candidate for this mode, but other images with lots of black can benefit from it. The problem with using chalk mode is that we don't always have a wide variety of white pens to use. Combo mode assumes a medium gray background and then uses black and white pens. You can see that the medium tones are blank while the dark and light areas are filled with two shades of black and one shade of white strokes respectively. Depending on the image and the pen and paper options you have available, you can try different modes to get the optimum design for sketching your photo. The color modes, the three at the bottom, parallel these but increase the complexity and number of pens you would need. For our last example, I'm selecting a pair of military style boots. Cropping doesn't matter much when it's a white background image. So I'll go back to the pencil mode and I'm going to want to verify that my settings are correct. Pencil, three shades, high intensity, hard tip, three overlap, and then let's try some different settings and see how they look. Medium's kind of interesting. I like high. Higher is okay too. But let's let's stick with high, and we'll we can redraw a couple times to see if we get some angles we like better. I'll stop here. When you get to a version you want to save, you click the save button. Press the top button and choose PDF. Now, the ability to save as a PDF is a paid upgrade, so if you haven't already upgraded, you'll be prompted to do so at this point. You want the second upgrade marked PDF. Last I checked, it was $3.99. Once the upgrade is complete, PDF will be an active option and you can click it. From the bottom button, select Email. The button at the lower right will now say Email PDF, so click that. You'll see that the email contains the settings you have chosen. This is one reason I like SketchMe versus SketchMe2, which doesn't have this. The attached PDF will have SketchMe in the title and be date and time stamped. You can also add a note in the email about the file for your later reference if you like, or change the subject to reflect more information, and click Send. When we get back to our computer, an email will be waiting for us with this PDF attached. Okay, so when we get back to our computer and open up our email, we will find an email from us to us with SketchMe in the title and an attachment here of a PDF. I can click this download button and send that to my downloads folder. It also opens automatically in preview for me, which gives me a chance to show you that this is a vector file. I can zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. The edges of the lines stay nice and crisp no matter what zoom level I have. This also shows you the contrast of how close up it just looks abstract, but far away it really looks like the image. 
Even if your cutting software can open PDFs, this still is not in a useful form because the strokes are all separate. We need a way to sort and then group or combine the hundreds of paths by line width before we can use the file with our cutters or draw bots. For this, we're going to need to bring the file to a vector editing program like Inkscape. I'm going to go through that whole process in a second video, so I hope you'll join me for that. Thanks for watching.